R. Narayana Murthy has been described as the father of India's IT sector, an entrepreneur that changed the face of tech not only in India but the world. It all began in 1981 when he and six friends founded Enforces with just $250, reputedly borrowed from his wife. They offered their services to companies looking to navigate a world that was increasingly becoming digital. The timing proved perfect. Not only was software use growing, but a new trend to outsource back office processes brought customers to their doorstep. Enforces is now one of the largest IT companies in the world, offering a range of tech solutions, from the cloud and AI to digital marketing and consulting. I caught up with the man behind it all, N.R. Narayana Murthy at his home. I want to start off, Mr. Murthy, by talking about the founding of Enforces in 1981. Walk us through that journey. It was a journey of extreme hard work because those days the government was not business friendly. You needed to go to Delhi several times even for simple approvals. We did not have current account convertibility. What that meant was even for making a trip abroad for a day, you had to apply to the Reserve Bank of India and wait for 10 to 15 days. The banks did not recognize software as, a, as an item of collateral. Therefore, you, it was very difficult to get any loans at all. So all the factors were against us. So it was a difficult journey. It required considerable sacrifice from people. Our families were extremely encouraging of our effort. So it was, it was a tough one, but it was a fulfilling one because we knew that we were on a path to achieve something worthwhile. How did the idea come to you? Because I was reading somewhere that you wanted to be part of the global software revolution at that time. Microsoft was coming up, Apple was coming up in the US. Well, right in the beginning, I realized that we should focus on services for a very important reason. There was a lot of unemployment amongst Indian engineers. Therefore, my desire was to do something whereby these youngsters could add value to the most competitive economies in the world and in the most challenging area, at least looking at it from that point of view because software was still very new and uh, there were very, very exciting things happening in the area of software. It's a well-known fact that your wife, Mrs. Murthy, gave you $250 to set up the company. What was the initial goal with that money? Well, actually, I have to say this for the sake of correctness. Our total money we put together was $250. However, a few of my colleagues at that point of time did not have even that small amount of money. So instead of not including them uh, uh, while registering the company, we said that the better thing is for me to use my practice of dipping into my wife's wallet and then start the company and then these, young, these colleagues gave me back uh, whatever they owed in a matter of six, eight months. Well, the idea was to create India's first company of the professional, for the professional, and by the professional, as Abe Lincoln defined the U.S. democracy. That, that was the, the vision. Right. And what did you carry from uh, in terms of the lessons that you took from your first experience 
because your first venture, Softronix, yeah. uh, failed. Yeah. So what lessons did you learn from that that you did not want to repeat with this one? Yeah. Well, there was a very important uh, lesson that I learned from the failure of Softronix. And I learned it pretty quickly. And that is, before you start your entrepreneurial venture with any idea, it is extremely important to do an, in, an inexpensive test marketing, whether marketing exists for the idea or not. Well, I didn't do that and then pretty quickly I realized there was no market for software services in India because there were very few computers and those computers were primarily in the government and government was not extremely enthusiastic in using the outside consultants for any of their tasks. So therefore, I closed down Softronix in about nine months and then I became the head of software in a company in Mumbai and I understood the export market, I understood the mistakes that I committed. I then I founded Infosys after overcoming some of my my ignorant points. But it was still not smooth sailing for you for the first 10 years. What was the greatest challenge that you faced in building the business in the first decade, especially in terms of gaining traction with US clients, which was your main market? Establishing brand for a, a new piddly company in the most competitive markets in the world was a huge challenge. Fortunately for us, we had worked with a corporation in New York that specialized in uh, delivering uh, software systems so software applications for the apparel industry and that's what gave us the initial thrust once you have the first customer once you have done a good job for that customer he or she will become your uh, champion yeah. that's how we did Despite all the challenges, you still rejected a takeover offer for Enforcers in 1990. That's right. So for $1 million, but you walked away from the money. Well, uh, my view was that we had all worked very hard. Our families had already gotten used to making sacrifices. We knew that our work ethic our differentiating factors would eventually lead to something better. And therefore, when that offer was there, when we had a discussion in our office, my view was that we should not give up at this point of time because, uh, you know, as they say, it is darkest before the dawn let's show a little bit more patience, patience yeah. and then it all worked out right. 